Hi, I'm Jonathan, and today we're going to be implementing billboard shaders in Unity. So billboards are game objects that always face the camera, regardless of where we are in the game world. And typically the way I've seen billboard shaders implemented before um, is to have a, um, a script attached to the game object and make that game object constantly face the camera. Instead of doing that, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to implement that exact same behavior, but in this case, directly inside of the shader. And that has two main advantages. The first advantage is the fact that it will work with multiple cameras and it will always work with multiple cameras. And the second advantage is that well, when you're designing things and when you're, when you're putting together your level set, those billboards are also going to work in the editor outside of play mode, as you can see here. So that being the case, there's a few features that we're going to be throwing in here. The first feature is the fact that, well, we want these billboards to work both with a textured plane, which is what you're seeing here with the checkbox, as well as with the Unity text object. So this shader is going to support both of those. And additionally, we're going to be throwing in one small feature, which is going to be a scale factor here in, directly in the shader, which is going to make it so that we can choose whether we want our shader to get bigger and smaller as we get closer and further from it, or whether we want the scale to remain constant, regardless of how far away we are from our billboard. So both these behaviors are desirable depending on the context that you want. So we're going to be building a shader that will support both use cases. So let's get right into it. The first thing that you're going to need is going to be a UV checker. So I'm using the one here that was graciously donated by Igor Grinchescu, if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, and you can download it at the link that I'll have left in the description. The second thing that I'm using is a font file. This is going to be for the last part of the tutorial where we are going to adapt our shader so that it can accommodate Unity's text object. So I'm using Joseph and Sans here, uh, which you can download for your purposes. You can use any font file that you'd like, provided that it's a TTF file or anything that's compatible with Unity. And finally, I'm using this free asset pack just to grab a few icons that we're going to be billboarding in our game environment. So those are the three files that you're going to need. I've gone ahead and just stripped everything down so that all we have are the files that we need. And the first one that we're going to be using right out of the, right out of, right out of the gate is going to be the uh, checker map. Okay, so First thing we're going to do in Unity itself is throw in a plane and we're going to scale that plane down to 0.1.1.1 .1 to get a one meter by one meter plane. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to create a material. This is going to be our billboard material and we are going to create a custom shader. And in this case, we're going to be basing ourselves off of the unlit shader because it's a fantastic starting point for this particular use case. So S Billboard. There we go. Next, we're going to open that up and we are going to change its categorization here. Tutorial. And we are going to assign it to this material. Tutorial as billboard. And we're going to give it our texture and we are going to assign it to our object. So there we go. Now we have a checker texture. We're going to change the orientation of our plane so that, and this is going to be a convention, you can feel free to define any convention that you'd like, but the convention that we're going to be using here and modify the shader accordingly if you decide to choose a different convention, but the convention that we're going to be using here is that when we look at the billboard before its shader has been applied, it should be facing in the correct direction. It should be not flipped, not upside down, not backwards, when the camera is looking at it from the Z perspective. So this is just going to be our convention. You could do something completely different if you want. That's not a problem. You'll just have to adapt the shader accordingly. But this is the convention that I've decided to follow for the sake of this tutorial. Now, we're going to switch over though, and we are going to switch over to the check mark because it's very rare that we design billboards that don't rely on transparency. So let's make our billboard have some transparency. So if we go into our, um, if we go into our shader here, First thing we're going to do is we're going to turn our Z test off. Uh, we are going to make it so that it's rendered no matter what. It's going to kind of be like a UI element. Uh, feel free to do anything you'd like, depending on what you need, depending on your needs. Uh, we are going to render this along with transparency and the Q order 
is going to be transparent, but we're going to want to render this really late. So again, it depends on what you have in your scene, what other shaders you have, but I'm going to be render rendering this at transparent plus 500. Um, okay, so now that we've done that, we also need to set our blend mode. So we're going to just use a standard alpha blend. So we're going to be multiplying um, our input by source alpha, and we are going to be multiplying our output by one minus source alpha, exactly what you would expect in um, an alpha blend to do. And once we've done this, normally everything should already be working. There we go. Now we have wonderful transparency. That's a good starting point. But um, now what we need to do is turn this into a billboard. Right. One more thing. We are also going to turn off culling. And this is going to, you don't need to do this, but it won't change much in terms of performances because it will never it will never benefit from back face culling since it's always facing the camera, but turning it off will save you a lot of time and aggravation potentially when you're writing the shader. If you make some mistakes that flip the normals instead of seeing nothing, um, at least you'll still see something. That's another thing that I like to do when I'm working. You can turn this off once you're done, um, but it's a nice thing to turn off while it's a, you can turn this back on when you're done, but it's a nice thing to have off while you're working. Okay, so we've got now we have our, our custom shader. We've got a good start. We've got transparency. The first thing, and actually before we continue any further, we are going to put our checker texture back on just because it's easier to work with. This here, this line of code is really the key line of code that we're going to be changing. And this is what's going to make our billboard shader a billboard shader. And it all comes down to this function. So what this function does is it takes a vertex that's in the object's local space. It applies what we call the model matrix, uh, which takes that object in local space and turns that vertex into a vertex that's now in world space. And then it goes through the view matrix. Once it goes through the view matrix, now instead of being in world space, it's in view space. So essentially the camera's coordinate or the camera's position is zero, zero, zero. The Z axis is the forward axis of the camera and the vertex coordinates are defined as a function of the camera once you're in view space. And finally, there's a third matrix, which is what you call the projection matrix, uh, which goes from view space to clip space. I'm not gonna get into too much detail in this tutorial, but for all intents and purposes, it normalizes everything from a minus one to one range so that the final rendering can be done and so that elements that are off screen can be removed and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we won't get into too much detail there because we don't need it in the context of this tutorial. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be replacing this function. And the first thing we're going to do is replace it by its equivalent. Actually, if you go look at the documentation for this function, it's very straight. It, it's, it's written black on white that that function is entirely equivalent to unity matrix MVP. So essentially, if we take this vertex coordinate and we multiply it by this matrix, well, that's exactly what the function that was there was doing. And well, lo and behold, um, nothing has changed, which is good. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to split this multiplication operation into three parts. We're going to split it into the, M, the, the, the model matrix, the view matrix, and the perspective matrix. And so we're going to break these lines apart. So float four, um, world position is equal to essentially the same line, except that this time we're only going to be leaving the model matrix. We're going to copy this three times and we are going to have the view position and we are going to have the clip position. And we're just going to be splitting that matrix apart. And o.vertex for now is just going to be equal to clip pause. So there we go. Again, normally nothing should have changed. Something has changed. What have I done? I've forgotten to reassign of our variables here. So of course it's not going to work. And there we go. So now we're right back to our original result. All we've done is slow things down by having three multiplications instead of a single multiplication by the MVP matrix, but that's okay in this case. Okay, now this here is the line that we have 
a particular interest in changing because essentially we're still going to want to do our conversion to world space the exact same way we would have done it with a normal render uh, process. Now, what we don't want is we don't want the orientation to change as a function of the camera. We want the orientation to always be the same, regardless of how the camera is looking at the object. So let's comment it out. And what we're going to do is we are going to compute a few things. So the first thing we're going to be computing is float for, we want to know the origin of our object. So where is our object in world space? And to do that, we are going to multiply the zero, zero, zero vector by unity object to Actually, no, that's not what we want for this one. For this one, we just want to multiply by unity matrix M in order to get the world origin. And now the next thing we want to do is we want to get our, our view origin. So what we could do is we could do the same thing as we just did here and just change for V. But what's actually recommended in the docs is that we should be using the unity object to view pause. And that way we can just throw in a float three here with zero, zero, zero. Okay, so again, I normally we shouldn't have changed anything. We've just added some new values. Just check for compilation errors, errors which of course we have. Line 47, line 47, unity matrix M, float three, nope, float four. And we have another error cannot convert from flow three to float four indeed because this function here does not generate a float four generates a flow three i want to be working with float fours in this case and there we go okay so now we've resolved our compilation errors and again we haven't actually changed anything so now what we want to do is we want to take this line and we want to change its behavior we no longer want the geometry to take into account the camera's position. We just want it to always look at the camera the exact same way. And in fact, by degrading this line of code, instead of multiplying it by the full matrix, but only multiplying it by part of the matrix, uh, turns out that we can get exactly the effect that we want. So what we're going to do, we're going to just comment this out for a second. And we are going to write a very degraded version of this, where instead of having it apply a full matrix, which in which it would be capable of applying uh, rotation and scale, we're just going to be applying a translation. And that translation is going to be the following. We're going to take the world uh, position. We're going to subtract from the world position, the world origin, such that at this point, we would end up with a position that's actually centered at zero, zero, zero. Uh, but then we're going to add on the view origin so that it's now centered uh, where it should be centered, but rotation won't have been applied at all. So if we actually look at what this gives out of the box, uh, we end up with the following result. And now we have essentially a available board shader and it stays in the correct position and it always faces the camera. But of course, if you're paying close attention to what's going on here, you'll notice that well, things are flipped. And the reason that things are flipped is that my convention is actually a little bit upside down. Um, when the camera is looking at the plane, it's actually looking at it with the Z axis pointing towards the plane. Whereas the convention that I had set uh, was the other way around just because I find it more intuitive and easier to use. So instead of changing the convention to match the view uh, space convention, we are going to just create a very small adapter layer whereby we are going to flip and turn this plane around 180 degrees by flipping two of the coordinates. So to do that, we are going to be taking our view origin and we are going to take our view origin. We are going to be now um, flipped, oops, not view origin, sorry. We're going to be taking our world position and this time we're going to be defining a flipped world oops world position and that's going to be equal to world position that is multiplied 
by a float four. And very simply, we are going to be flipping the X axis and the Z axis, thus rotating it effectively 180 degrees. And let's look at that, what, what that gives. And that didn't give much. Ah, right, because we're not reusing the same vectors, now we're going to use the flipped world position and we're going to throw it into there. Of course. So, if we go back to zero, 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 now it works, now we have the correct orientation. But as we just saw a second ago, the second we start moving it around, we get some really wonky behavior. And of course, that's not what we want. The thing is, we just flipped everything including the origin of of our geometry or in world space so we don't want to do that we've actually just flipped the way that our transform is being applied as well so we're going to be adding another small patch to that we are before we do our flip we are going to subtract our world origin and after we do our flip we are going to add our world origin that way that should resolve that problem. There you go. So now this behaves the way we would expect. We now have a billboard and that billboard can be placed anywhere in space. It respects everything that you would expect a billboard to respect. And, uh, and there you go. So now we have a billboard. So if we wanted to go back to our check mark, we could just take our check mark here and reassign it to our billboard so that's great there we have it now the thing about billboards is that um, of course it's not going to stop there the thing about billboards is that scale is always a little bit finicky because billboards have a tendency of getting really far from us and we don't necessarily want them to get small quite the same way as every ob other object does in fact in a lot of content we want billboards to remain the exact same size on screen regardless of distance. So for example, if you have a location pip somewhere in the distance, well, that pip shouldn't change in size. So let's implement that as well. We're going to create a new variable here or a new um, property. So this one's going to be called our scale factor. And the scale factor is going to define, it's just going to be a value between zero and one that's going to define whether the object should scale with distance the way an object would normally scale with distance, or conversely, whether it remains the exact same scale regardless of where you are in the environment. So the scale factor is going to be called scale factor. It is a range that goes from zero to one. And by default, by default, we want this to scale the way we would expect an object, a normal object to scale, just so that it behaves in a predictable manner. So we're going to set that to zero. And the other thing that we want to set or create is a reference distance. So if we do have the object scale up as we get closer or further away, then if we do do that, then we want to have a reference distance. So at what distance is that object its actual scale? So by default, I put it at 10 meters. So at 10 meters, if we leave it at the default value, if you're the camera is 10 meters or 10 units away from the billboard, then it will have the exact scale that the game object had originally before the shader was applied. And so that gives us a nice, um, a nice starting point to play with. What we're going to do is we're going to compute a scale factor Oops, missing my declarations down here. Float scale factor and float reference distance. And so we're going to now calculate a scale and that scale is going to be based off of the two coefficients that we've just given. So the first is going to be if scale factor is equal to zero, so to get scale factor is equal to zero, we want one as a multiplier here. So we're going to have one minus scale factor. That's going to be on this side. And then we are going to have scale factor, which is going to come in and it's going to divide the distance that we are from our billboard by our reference distance. So we know what our reference distance is. 
but it also turns out that we know what our distance from the camera is very simply because the view origin is or the, the, the magnitude of view origin is equal to that distance. So we can just throw it into here and that way we will now have a scale factor and we want to apply that scale factor directly on our vertices. But there is a bit of a catch here and we'll get into that in a second. There's a bit of a catch. Uh, we are working with float fours and we don't want to be increasing our our last uh, value we want that to stay one so what we're going to do is we're going to take our scale and instead of just mo multiplying by our scale being a scalar we're going to multiply by float four with our scale in there three times and a simple value of one to leave the fourth coefficient of our world position completely unchanged so again hopefully that compiles and there we have it so now if we increase our scale factor the billboard does not change size in screen space and our reference distance is 10 meters so if we set ourselves to 10 meters which we are roughly at 10 meters we can kind of guess that just by looking at the grid here so we're approximately at 10 meters at 10 meters it doesn't matter whether the scale factor what the scale factor is set to the result is the same so if the scale factor is equal to zero the object scales as does every single other object if the scale factor is at one then it remains at a constant size and what's actually kind of neat is you don't have to just set it at zero or one you can set it even at a halfway point whereby it does get bigger and smaller over distance. Let's just turn off our, our handles there. It does get smaller and bigger with distance, but not in the same way as other objects do. So it's a nice compromise sometimes to have. In some cases, this is actually perfect. And you can play with that coefficient to set it, uh, to decide, well, how you want, um, how you want the shader to, or how you want the object to scale with distance. And you can really have fun with it in the sense that if you want, you can throw in some exponents in there. You can, throw in some powers, uh, you can clip it. It's entirely up to you how you want that scale to behave. But this is something that I have a tendency of doing and it's just a, it, it pretty much suits most of my, my use cases. So but we, now we can move on to the next step. And the next step will be to take this shader and adapt it to Unity's text object. Let's leave this guy here and let's create a new object. In this case, it's going to be a 3d text let's bring it up and let's center it middle center and let's have it respect our convention so our convention is that it should be facing in the positive z direction let's create a new material which we're going to be calling the billboard font let's assign it to our text of course that doesn't work let's assign it to our text and there we go and let's also assign the font itself which we are going to be throwing into here now the thing is when you assign a font it actually automatically assigns the font material so we want to be throwing that back into here so the way the unity text object works is it creates a bunch of quads one quad for each letter and it sets the UV coordinates so that they adequately match the UV coordinates of the font texture that's automatically generated based off of the font file. So let's actually go play with that a little bit. We're going to increase the font size. Uh, it's rare that a font size of 16 is actually what we want. So we're just gonna increase that to 72, which is actually the only change that we're going to be making to our object. And we're going to downsize that significantly. Okay. So there we are. Of course, we haven't done anything for our shader to support this adequately. So needless to say, it's currently not supporting it. But turns out that we're not far off. All we have to do to begin with is grab our shader, our billboard shader. So right away, we see that it's coming into action. We actually have a billboard right off the bat, which is good. And the second thing that we're going to do with that billboard is we are going to assign our texture. So there you go. Now we have hello world that is appearing there as we would expect with the correct font and in this case billboarded but and there is a but 
Well, if we look at the text object here, the text object relies on a color setting and that color setting right now is not working at all. And the reason that it's not working is this color setting sets the vertex color of the mesh itself, but our shader isn't taking into account the vertex color at all. So we're going to create an option. So similarly to what we've done here, we are going to set, create a new, um, new property, which is going to be use vertex color. And we are going to call that use vertex color. And it is also going to be a range from zero to one. And by default is going to be equal to zero so that we're not using the vertex color. But if we turn it on, all of a sudden it's going to work with some fonts. So how we're going to do this is the color is going to be defined first and foremost by the by the vertex color. Uh, and we're going to have to come in and declare that, but uh, let's just call that color for now. And to do that, well, we need to add color into our input data. So colors a float for color, and that's going to be color over here. Then we're going to need an interpolator for that as well. So we're going to create float for color, and this is going to be color zero. So essentially this is our input data structure, uh, which we're now going to tell it, well, watch out, there's vertex color now. So we need to take that into account. That's what's coming into here. And then the second thing we're going to be throwing in is our vertex to fragment um, structure. We're going to be throwing in a color element. We're going to tell it to interpolate it uh, as a color. And we are just going to be adding one line here, very simple, o.color is equal to v.color. So we're just passing that data through the vertex shader and not actually changing it in any way whatsoever. But we're going to use it down here um, at this point with i.color. So right away, if we actually just remove this, now we should have our vertex color come into effect and actually work. So there it is, it's now red. If I change the color of this, it changes as well. So the vertex color is now being taken into account, but of course now we're no longer taking into account the texture. So if we're just using the vertex color, then what we want to do is we want to apply the alpha of our texture and that's the only thing that we're going to be applying and we can actually do that as a temporary step here we are going to be creating a new fixed for text and what we could do is just go call.a is equal to text.a which is actually what we're going to do and that's actually going to stay and there we go so now now we've got the text working quite nicely but we do not have our check, check mark here working. So let's continue on. Essentially what it comes down to is call.rgb is going to be equal to, and we're going to do this coefficient trick again. It's going to be equal to call.rgb if use vertex color is equal to zero. So if it's equal to zero, then we end up with a one here and we now use our call.rgb as our color. And then if we just multiply use vertex color over here by, oops, I just made a mistake here. So it's actually the other way around. Call RGB currently has our vertex color. That's the only thing that it has. Uh, so we want to multiply this by text RGB. And finally, here we have call.rgb, which we are going to be multiplying by one minus vertex color. So this is just a formula where when use vertex color is equal to zero, then this part is equal to zero and this part is equal to one. And therefore the only thing that remains is call.rgb. So call.rgb remains unchanged. And then if use vertex color is equal to one, then this part is equal to zero, which cancels out call.rgb and only leaves text.rgb. So if we save that, now normally we have an error, of course, because I forgot my declaration here, use vertex color 
And there you go. So now we have hello world. Well, that's a bit embarrassing. I got that wrong twice in a row. So it's going to be call.rgb. Call.rgb has our vertex color. Call.rgb times use vertex color, of course, ends up leaving only that. And text.rgb that multiplies one minus use vertex color. And there we go. So now we take our hello world and we tell it to use vertex color. It will use vertex color. Whereas in this case, if we set use vertex color to zero, it's no longer going to be using our vertex color. And there we go. There you have it. Now we have a billboard text, which works with all the properties that we had before. So we can make it so that it stays at a constant scale or make it shrink and get bigger with distance. And we have a billboard here as well. All right, guys, there you have it. You have a Unity shader that allows you to render a billboard for both the Unity text object as well as a plane. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any comments, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them below. If you'd like to get more details on maybe one of the steps or one of the elements that I kind of skipped over, um, don't hesitate to let me know. And if you have a better way of implementing, or if you think you have a better way of implementing uh, billboard shaders, or just have a different way of implementing billboard shaders, I'd love to hear about it. Uh, so don't hesitate to leave a comment um, in the comments below. So once again, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.